I'm Ashley Hucht with the Behavioral Endocrinology Branch at the National Institute of Mental Health. A team of investigators at the NIMH are examining how puberty affects brain development during adolescence. The NIMH wants to find out how the brains of children develop at a time when hormones and growth patterns change. The study is a collaboration between Dr. Peter Schmidt, Chief of the NIMH Behavioral Endocrinology Branch, and Dr. Karen Berman, Chief of the Section on Integrative Neuroimaging and the Clinical Brain Disorders Branch. Also on the team, we have Dr. Pedro Martinez, a child psychiatrist, and Drs. Xiaoming Wei and Catherine Redding, Neuroscience Research Fellows. I'm joined by Dr. Peter Schmidt, who specializes in the role of hormones on mood and behavior. So Dr. Schmidt, let me start with you. What is the purpose of this study and what does it involve? The question we're trying to answer in this study is what would be the role of puberty, in particular the activation of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which creates the uh, adult functioning testes in boys and a cyclic ovarian cycle in girls. Uh, what is the effect on that? those events on brain development. So in order to do this, there's several things that we have to be very careful about. The first is that we need to study boys and girls who are clearly pre-puberty, meaning that they haven't started any indication of puberty at this point in their life. After that, we then follow them on a regular basis over every eight to 10 months, longitudinally, to be able to identify what changes may be occurring as a function of puberty starting. So uh, the second issue is that each of these clinic visits, we perform brain imaging studies to measure changes in specific parts of the brain. We also at each clinic visit measure hormone levels by taking blood samples. We also collect urine samples and saliva samples to measure some of the stress hormones. And finally, we ask questions about symptoms whether it's related to their sleep, whether it's related to anxiety symptoms, or uh, a variety of other measures. You've taken the lead to coordinate what I suspect is a major logistical undertaking working with the children and their families. The children and their parents are invited to come back to the outpatient for clinic at the National Institutes of Health every eight to 10 months. Um, we do this until the, re the children reach the age of 17, which is a big commitment for everyone to participate in. But the amount of time and commitment that these families uh, spent on this project is, has been very important and very rewarding. What are the tests you use in the MRI to measure brain development and what does this tell you? So the children come in once every eight to ten months and they spend about half a day in the clinic. Um, but we also use several neuroimaging tools to understand, uh, to gather important information. So for example, we use wrist x-ray to understand bone, bone growth over time. We also use MRIs to look at brain development, to look at changes in fat distribution in the abdominal area, and also the growth of testes and ovaries across time. We know from studies in animals that several important brain circuits go through dramatic changes during the pubertal transition. So we designed some games that children can play when they come visit us, and so we can understand the changes in these brain circuits. So for example, we have a game that can help us understand um, emotional regulation. Uh, we, can al we also have a game that targets um, um, impulse control. Uh, we also have one that understands how memory changes and also um, a game that look at um, changes in reward processing. Dr. Redding, how is puberty different from adolescence? Well, adolescence is loosely defined as a time period between childhood and adulthood. Um, it involves different emotional, psychological, and physical changes. Puberty, however, is a specific biological process that is embedded in adolescence. Why are you starting with boys and girls that are eight years old? So one of the critical elements of the study is recruiting a pre-pubertal cohort. So by bringing children in at eight to nine years of age, we're more likely to recruit kids that are pre-pubertal. In addition, by bringing in children that are eight years old as opposed to say six or seven years old, we're also getting slightly more mature children, which for us will mean that they might be better at doing some of the neuroimaging tasks which are very difficult. Oftentimes you have to stay still for long periods of time and older children are a little bit better at staying still than younger children. 
I understand that the children have an appointment with you every nine months. Why is it important to complete a physical exam and assess pubertal development at each visit? The physical exam is a tool that physicians have been using in medicine since for centuries and is one of the first tools that we use in order to assess health and abnormalities as in, in the body. In this particular study, we're interested in assessing the changes that happen in the transition into puberty as the hormones start you know, uh, kicking in and signaling the transition into puberty. Um, the reason we measure uh, reproductive organs during these visits is because that is usually the first sign of change and the first sign of puberty in the transition. I understand that you interview children and their parents at each visit and they complete multiple questionnaires. What does this information tell you and why is it so important? It is important for us to record and to measure what kinds of changes are happening in behavior um, and mood across the transition into puberty. Dr. Schmidt, if you're exploring how puberty is related to brain changes, is there anything that you're trying to rule out to ensure that it is puberty and not something else? That's a very important question. Uh, in addition to the activation of the testes in boys or the ovaries in girls that we would call puberty, there are several other important physiologic events that occur at, at this time in adolescence. Specifically, adrenarche, which is when an element of the, or a section of the adrenal cortex, which is the gland that produces stress hormones, uh, suddenly becomes active and starts producing hormones that have a testosterone-like effect and obviously could impact on brain development. Second physiologic system that develops is the growth hormone system and related to the growth spurt. Both boys and girls go through a growth spurt where they um, have an acceleration of their normal growth velocity and this is under the control of several hormones, all of which may impact on brain development. So it's important at the end of the study that in each child we have a measure of when these milestones occur and then we can look to see what their impact may be on the neuroimaging measures that we're, that we're uh, obtaining in these children. The second uh, important element is that we need to recruit a group of healthy adults who are young adults who presumably are not undergoing any of the major changes that are happening uh, hormonally in the children and we scan them at a similar period of time in order to get a measure of what would be the effects of just time as opposed to puberty on these same brain measures that were collected. Finally, it's important that we recruit both boys and girls. And in fact, at this point, we're looking for more girls to recruit who are in the eight-year-old group in order to be able to identify at the end whether there are sex differences and whether these sex differences in brain development occur at different times or are under control of different physiologic systems in boys compared to girls. Why is this information so important to NIMH? Adolescence is a time where we see dramatic increases in neuropsychiatric illnesses. And the emergence of sex differences in several of these conditions, including anxiety and depression, uh, we also know from studies in animals that several important brain circuits go through dramatic changes during this critical period. And finally, by understanding what normal development looks like in healthy children, it will help us understand why or how these sex hormones affect children at risk at acquiring these diseases. Will the children's names be published in papers? No, they will not. The children will remain anonymous in these studies. Is compensation provided? Yes, compensation is provided every time they come visit us.